Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Cross! Last time, we defeated the Time Devourer with Surge alone, and we get a different ending for doing so. Depending on when you defeat the Time Devourer it, during the game, you get a different ending. This is how you get this ending. Now, some people just like using question marks excessively. Just like some people like using exclamation points excessively. Didn't they have an episode of Seinfeld about that? Eh, whatever. It's crazy! So yeah, let's check out this part of Viper Manor to talk to some of the developers of the game. This is the developer's ending, or the development room. Yay! More games should have development rooms. I think Terranigma had one too. So, we'll check that one out over there, too, eventually. Oh! I, I don't know what this guy's talking I don't even know m most of the people on uh, the Chrono Cross staff. I'll be honest with you. Uh, thanks for letting me know. My butt hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wrong game. We're not there yet. <laughs> one thing I was thinking about when fighting the Time Devourer was uh, how, at first, the Time Devourer is fighting you by casting the opposite colored element to what you want to cast for the Chrono Cross, but then as you go through the battle, it starts casting the, the exact element that you need. I wonder if that's like Scala winning her will over the Time Devourer, or Lavos, you know, as you weaken it throughout the battle or something like that by dealing damage to it or something. Huh? That would have been a nice little touch that they put in there if that was done on purpose like that. Eh, probably not. Yeah, they really did have a lot of good animations. At least they do give us the, the time shifter to go through, like, the excessively fast animations. Or the except exceptionally long animations, I mean. Oh, and there's a, a black cat there. Great. By the way, something else you can do with uh, Time Shifter is you can slow down the game like that. If you want to, for like, say, the dragon feeding game, if you need it, or for some other reason. I don't know why else you would need it, but that is one reason you could do it. No, no, I don't think we're going to meet again. They're not crazy enough to make a third Chrono game. Oh, wow. I had fun with the two that they made. Maybe they can work the pacing out a little better, but... Eh. You know, I like how, at least if, you know, they're not going to change the scenery with each part, like they did in the developer ending in Chrono Trigger, at least they're changing up the music, you know? I like that. That's a good touch. Or you could rest in peace. Hmm? What? What do you mean? Oh, this guy. I'm not falling for that again. No. Nope. Not gonna fall for it. Just like the last game. Wait a minute. He didn't... He didn't really reset. Did he? Oh no! I've got to do all that work all over again! No! Nah! What? Oh, nah. Just kidding. Just kidding, viewers. That's what happened to me the first time. I was like, nah, I'm not going to fall for it. Wait a minute. Did he really reset this time? Yeah, I like how they did that there, you know? Eh, I don't care to see power moves. You could just make the game harder, like Dragon Warrior 2. Maybe that was a little over the top. Okay, well let's check out the uh, the other side of this area, or this part of the developer's room. You just go to the left, and you'll end up on the other side there. Now yeah, let's talk to some of these guys over here. Or you could, you know, make less characters. I'm sorry, that 44 was a bit too much. I'd say, as a general rule, I'd say 9 should be the limit. But, huh? What? Oh. Oh, well, there you go. But yeah, I mean, Final Fantasy 4 and 6, well, that's a different story. 
Oh yeah, here's how they did that accent thing for all the characters. Uh, I don't know why, but... Well, I know why, but I don't think it was a good idea. And some of the accents, they just got a little bit... Yeah, yeah, they got a bit annoying. I'll kick your arse for that. Thanks a lot. Kind of reminds me of how, uh, you know, they did, well, not so much accents in Final Fantasy VIII, but well, just the way people talked in that game kind of bothered me a little bit. But, uh, well, we'll get to that soon enough. I'll try to keep it positive, but, you know, there's some things that, well, yeah, it's not really bad. It's just, well, I, I don't ask, oh, but thou must agree with me. Yeah, I don't ask that, you know, everyone speaks grammatically perfectly in a game, but, you know, make it legible. Eh, sorry, I went through that a little quickly. Well, I guess you didn't have a next project, apparently. Yeah, it was a fun journey. I agree with you. Yeah, really. I didn't even know Marble got rebuilt the first time around. I mean, I just kind of played through the game, and then I said, okay, I've had enough. I mean, the first time I played it, I mean, I liked the game, but I didn't think it was as great as I think it is now, in retrospect. I mean, I guess I just didn't really have an appreciation for, like, the exploration and everything like that, and talking to all the random people, I guess, back then. I mean, I like exploration, but it's possible to overdo it. Chrono Cross did not do that, but, like, a lot of those freeform RPGs, it's just too much exploration for me. I like to, you know, have a sense of completion or progress in the games that I play, you know? So it is possible to have too much exploration. I wonder if it's possible to have too much linearity in a game, though. Mm, probably not, but that's probably because I'm used to, like, the old, old school games. Kind of hard to have too much linearity, because even then, if you have a linear plot, I mean, you can explore the towns and talk to people and everything like that, you know? So, I mean, that's all good, you know? I mean, there's still, even with a li very linear plot, you can still fit in different kinds of exploration, you know? So, I don't know. I've heard that's one of the critiques about Final Fantasy XIII, that it's uh, too linear, especially at first, but, well... I think I'll wait on buying that one. At least at the time of making this video, if you're watching this in the future, well, Final Fantasy XIII hasn't come out in my country yet, so... Well, the animation was good enough. You know, sorry I was rambling like that there and not reacting to these guys, but... Well, I just, you know, get on something and, well, can this do anything? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I get distracted very easily by, like, one comment some guy makes, and then I just go off on it for, like, five minutes. <laughs> oh, well, thanks a lot. Oh, well, yeah, it, I mean, I, I look, one thing I forgot to mention about the graphics and the artwork that I like, it was just so vibrant and lifelike and everything, and it just really drew me into the world, you know? That's one thing I really liked about that, like the Sky Dragon Isle, or the Hydra Marshes, things like that, you know? Nah, I don't have any, uh, donations for you. Sorry, pal. Shake it, baby. You might want to talk to the guards at the front there. Let's see what's up here. What the? It, did it take me to the same place? Well, actually, it's the same area, but we got a whole bunch of other people to talk to. Next time on Let's Play Chrono Cross. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day. This is the longest ending, I promise, viewers.